Sorry about that, babe. Illusion of Gaia, otherwise known as Illusion of Time in the PAL regions, is an action RPG that was developed by Quintet and published by Nintendo in North America. And also, I felt this was worthy to note it was published by Enix in Japan, and it was released in North America on September 1st of 1994. One of, if not my favorite parts of Illusion of Gaia is the story and the characters within it. The setting of the game takes place on Earth, but it's sort of a mishmash of historical accuracy and fantasy. It'll explore lots of places that exist in the real world, such as the Incan Ruins, the Nazca Lines, Angkor Wat, the Great Wall of China, and the Egyptian Pyramids, eventually finishing off your quest at the Tower of Babel. You assume the role of Will, a young boy who unfortunately lost his father while on a journey to uncover the secrets of the Tower of Babel. Those that accompanied on the trip also fell into mysterious circumstances, and everyone except Will, and a flute. <laughs> He was somehow, some way, able to make it back to his hometown. Early on in the game, Will stumbles into a dark space, which you will see numerous times throughout your playthrough, namely to heal, save, change characters, and gain new abilities. And there is a being known as Gaia. Gaia tells us that Will must set out and save the world from an oncoming evil. There's a comet approaching and it's going to do some massive damage to the world as he knows it. Now, this is just a layman's overview of the story, of course there's twists and turns, and Illusion of Gaia touches on many emotional and social topics, some of which I will cover in this review, and some of which you'll just have to experience for yourself. An interesting tidbit here before we really get started is that there was a leaked prototype English version of the game titled Soul Blazer Illusion of Gaia, which of course ties into the whole spiritual trilogy by Quintet Enix of Soul Blazer, Illusion of Gaia, and Terranigma. Pretty cool little bit of history, but since this isn't a breakdown of the prototype, I'm not going to get into the cutting room floor of it all, which by the way, credit to that wonderful website for this info. Graphically, Illusion of Gaia is superb, whether it be the detailed sprite work of Will and his friends, the other NPCs, the immersive dungeon designs, lively towns, or the beautiful backdrops and cutscenes, they're sure to leave an impression. The colors pop and add life throughout. The journey appears and feels grand, and the bosses are quite intimidating. This is definitely one of the more aesthetically pleasing games on the console, helping immerse you in your surroundings and the tasks at hand. The soundtrack of Illusion of Gaia is top notch. Composer Yasuhiro Kawasaki puts together a wonderful blend of tracks that help add to the immersion and feeling of the area that you're in. The lively and humble beginnings of your journey in South Cape are met with an upbeat track that conveys a warm, sunny feeling with family and friends. The droney nature of Dark Space truly makes you feel like you're in a different timeline. The ominous nature of tracks such as Signs of the Past and Will's Dreams lead you into the feeling of mystery, dread, or something heavily emotional ahead. And my personal favorite track, that of which plays in the conclusion of the game, In the Earth and Womb, fills me with so many feelings. Sadness, longing, but also accomplishment and joy. It hits on an emotional range like none other, pairing up beautifully with the wonderfully crafted emotional dialogue. Another cool thing here is the influence of Soul Blazer on the soundtrack. There are a few tracks clearly pulling inspiration from its spiritual predecessor, despite having a different composer. My only complaint? I wish there were even more tracks. While there is good variety, certain tracks you will hear a few times, and just a couple more could have suited this game better. If you have an action RPG, the controls better be good or your journey will be a flawed or borderline annoying one. Thankfully, Illusion of Gaia hit the mark on the controls, for the most part. As far as traversing the world in dungeons and attacking with will, it's great. Movement feels fluid and free, double tapping a direction on the d-pad will engage in a sprint, and attacking feels responsive and unique. We'll cover a bit more of the combat in the next section, but from an actual gameplay standpoint, the controls are satisfactory. Where the controls do suffer a bit are outside of those areas. The number one most annoying thing about Illusion of Gaia, for me, plagued both of my playthroughs, and that's dialogue boxes without arrows can be skipped by pressing the d-pad. So yeah, let's say you're walking into an area and still holding up or down. If a dialogue box starts, you could accidentally skip it. And in some instances, this dialogue can't be replicated. And even when it can be, it's annoying having to go back through again just to read it. You're better off never holding down the d-pad. <laughs> And don't you dare think about idly pressing buttons unless you want an annoyance on your hands. Coupled with that is a bit of a clunky menuing system. Equipping and using items proves to be a bit cumbersome. There are more than a few times where I didn't have the item equipped due to the weird, seemingly unresponsive equipping system. If you play or have played already, you probably understand what I mean. It's just not super tight. 
And it's also pretty easy to accidentally use an item while it's equipped as the dialogue boxes go so fast in this game, so be careful. Illusion of Gaia is a grand, fun, and tidy adventure. Whether it be the fluid and intuitive combat that's given variety by transforming into other warriors while in dark space such as Frieden or Shadow, or the fact that you can consistently gain new abilities for both Will and Frieden throughout the game, some of which actually help you reach new areas of the dungeon such as Will's Psycho Slider or Spin Dash, or help eliminate faraway enemies like Frieden's Dark Fryer ability. The combat and exploration remains fun the entire way through. One of the best combos in the game for attacking is a normal attack by Will, followed up with a jump attack, doing a good amount of damage while closing distance and also giving some much needed iframes. Another great attribute of Illusion of Gaia is that it doesn't overstay its welcome. I feel like it's the perfect length and there are basically no filler segments in the game. Some people might complain about the raft segment, or some parts in the towns, but even when you're not engaged in battle, the game keeps you intrigued and hooked whether it be via gimmicks like fishing on the raft, or the wonderful dialogue touching on a range of topics that we'll be covering shortly. There's really only one true side quest in the game, and that of finding all 50 red jewels scattered throughout the game, which the more you find, the more items and abilities you get from the jeweler gem, eventually leading to a secret area that houses a familiar foe from long ago, when you find all 50. When you are ready to engage in combat, you are rewarded for clearing screens of all enemies by receiving dark gems, which can be picked up manually or by the telekinesis ability. These add to a point pool, giving you extra lives. Clearing enemies will also give you power-ups to your attack, defense, and health. However, fear not, if you're one of those let's breeze through the game as quick as you can, you could try your luck at the boss of the area by defeating it and you'll still gain all the abilities that you could have gained prior without having to defeat all the enemies. I actually didn't realize this until late in my playthrough, but hey, wouldn't you rather be powered up for the boss anyway? However, it is worth noting that some dungeons, mostly towards the end of the game, you'll have to backtrack out and it could be quite annoying as oftentimes there's nothing there. You've probably already cleared all the enemies out, looted everything, so most likely you're just literally backtracking. This is definitely something that I felt I had to mention as it did annoy me a little bit. Now, it's pretty clear that I have high praise for Illusion of Gaia, and rightfully so. It's a very well made, technically impressive and enjoyable game. That in of itself would make it worth a playthrough, and put it up with some of the best games on the console. But where Illusion of Gaia really sets itself apart is the aforementioned story, dialogue, and topics that it touches on. It gets heavy. I want to stress this, Illusion of Gaia is by far the most emotionally touching and thought-provoking game that I've ever played. And this is a Super Nintendo game. I'm not being facetious either. This game really did something to me. Let's get into some of the examples. One of the main themes that resonates with me throughout Illusion of Gaia is that of animals, their feelings, consuming animals as food, and so on. There is a very heavy lean towards essentially veganism, touching on how an animal feels fear before dying, their feelings in general, and so on. Probably the two main points of the game that stick out to me are the raft segment, when Kara discusses Fish's feelings and not wanting to eat them. Eventually, as the days at sea pass, both Kara and Will are starving, so eventually they have to kill and consume the fish in order to survive. Which leads into the super sad and iconic moment of Kara's pig, Hamlet. Which, by the way, there's a cheeky enemy uh, named Yorick, which you'll find later on. <laughs> anyway, Hamlet sacrifices itself for the natives in this village who were starving to death, pretty much driving the point home of only eating animals when it's absolutely necessary. Now, I'm not gonna get super preachy. I don't eat red meat or pork for both health and personal reasons, but I still eat chicken and fish. But even with that, I could still resonate with this theme at least a little bit, and especially because of my wife, who is vegan. Another major topic throughout the game is that of human labor, trafficking, and just getting the short end of the stick. There's literally a point in the game where you can turn a laborer in <laughs> who is being harbored by a man out of the goodness of his heart, all for a red jewel. You see a range of emotions from laborers throughout the game who, let's be real, they're basically just slaves. Another thing is that in the town of Dao, there's women weaving carpets for 40 years? and they're just basically born into misfortune. I instantly think of the show The Wire and how that opened my eyes to somehow sometimes people just have the deck stack against them in various ways. Of course, there's also themes of love, losing loved ones, the vastness yet insignificance of life, and I also really enjoyed the parallels between Will and Kara, missing and longing for their parents, as well as the Earth and all of its quote, children, and how Mother Earth also gets lonely if her children forget about her, which I guess could be likened to basically destroying the world of pollution, industrialization, and so forth. There's also often misunderstood plot points regarding NPCs that are insanely deep. For example, the Russian glass player in Water Mia. The game is basically Russian roulette, but with drinking poison. After Will uh, defeats him, he drinks the poison and passes away. Afterwards, Will is left with the man's last will and testament, getting the crux to go to the desert and so forth, but you end up finding out that the man was suffering from a terminal illness, knowing that he was going to die soon, and he started playing Russian glass to set up a better life monetarily for his wife and his child. The widow eventually follows up with Will saying, we don't need money, real joy is being with those you love. Again, I just want to reiterate this is a Super Nintendo game. 
It took every fiber of my being not to blubber like a baby during the finale of this game, as thoughts of my wife, my family, loved ones that have come and gone, both human and animal, they all raced through my head. This game really touched my soul, all the while being so much fun. All that being said, where does Illusion of Gaia stack amongst the other RPGs and greats on the console? In my opinion, it's up there with the best of them. I liked Illusion of Gaia the first time I played it, but I loved it after the second time. To me, this is more than just a game. Sure, the gameplay, combat, graphics, soundtrack, and general moderate difficulty provided a wonderful experience. But when you throw in the story, the dialogue, the characters, and serious life topics that this game dives into, it takes it to a whole new level. Sure, some of the menuing is clunky, a few backtracking segments can get old, and maybe kinda sorta there could have been a little bit more, I don't know, side questy stuff aside from the red jewels. But honestly, that's me just nitpicking this. Illusion of Gaia is not only one of the best SNES games, it's not only one of the best RPGs. Illusion of Gaia is one of the best games of all time. People could have their differing opinions on this game, whether it's overrated, underrated, perfectly rated, or what have you. But my personal experience with this game transcends merely adventuring to defeat a boss. This is a journey through and about life that happens to be a lot of fun along the way. I give Illusion of Gaia on the SNES a 9.5 out of 10. Now, I hear that Terra Enigma is even better, and that one will also make my eyes rain like Simple Jack. <laughs> so yeah, I'm stoked to get to that sometime this year, but in the meantime, let me just bask in the glory that was and is a timeless classic, or as some would say, an illusion of time. If you've enjoyed this review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to check out my other Illusion of Gaia content, check out the pinned comment or description below, as well as the end screen. Take care.